Hey, welcome Lax Rats, Lax Rat fans to another show. Hopefully everybody's got plenty of time on their hands and can tune us in. Uh, we're happy to be able to continue to bring you a show. Chopper here. We'll be pitching to each of my cohorts shortly and welcome to the show. Well, let's check in with the coach, Chris Jewett. Chris, what have you been up to? What's going on? Chris Jewett here with Lax Rats and Leverage Lacrosse. We're going to talk a little bit about time and room shooting. You mean you have the time and you have the room to shoot. I got my main man, Will, here, who's five, to demonstrate. What Will's going to do is he's going to scoop it, he's going to smell his elbow, he's going to take the step, he's going to push, pull, and end up in his pocket. Do 100 of those a day and you're going to get better. Go ahead, Will. Well done, buddy. Have fun. Great job. Well, as the weeks go by, people continue to ask, where's Tolly? Tolly, where you been? Hey, thanks Chopper and hello from the home studio. As you can see, Chopper, Coach and I are practicing social distancing. And we are still producing our weekly show, but from our home studios. What a day to be alive, my goodness. I hope all of you out there are practicing social distancing as well, washing your hands. But most importantly, I feel that everyone needs to stay positive and stay healthy and stay focused. Almost look at it like it's a reset in life right now. Not going to school, not playing the game you love lacrosse, I certainly miss being at the field level, interviewing players and coaches, but right now this is a time to almost reflect, but still practice at your craft. To all the players out there, I hope you are enjoying our SoCal weather. Governor Newsom did say that you can still go outside, so get out there with your stick, play some wall ball during this time. So of course I had to reach out and see what coaches and players are doing during this shutdown period time. Hopefully staying positive out there, I chatted with Newbury Park's head coach to see what she and her team are doing remotely and how they are staying together collectively as a team. Hi, I'm Michelle Yarger, head women's lacrosse coach at Newbury Park. Uh, we were coming off a great 6-0 start, led by our captains, Aaron Duffy, junior Emma Ng, and the best goalie in the West, Daniela Gayette. Um, we had a long-term goal going into the season that we were going to win CIF, and I think that we were very much on our way, and now we have to kind of slow down and uh, readjust. And you know, our season is postponed indefinitely, and ways that we are staying connected as a team is daily check-ins. You know, we send wall ball videos and tempo runs, um, and spending time with family. You know, this is a good time to just look out for the community as a whole. And a great thing about sports, and especially lacrosse, especially women's lacrosse, is there's a lot of us out here that, you know, would do anything for each other. And so we're all reaching out. It doesn't matter what team you're on or what league you're in. It's like, I think we're all in this together, and that's like a really powerful and beautiful thing about women's lacrosse. Um, to all the seniors out there, you know, this season will not be forgotten. I, you know, I hope that us coaches can come together across the board from LA to Orange County and find a way to honor you guys and what you have done for lacrosse, especially in Los Angeles. Um, I'm optimistic that the CIF can come together and us coaches can come together and we can maybe do like a top 10 round robin tournament in a month, two months, three months. Um, because I really think it's important to say goodbye to our seniors. Um, a special shout out to our Newbury Park seniors. You will never be forgotten. This season is not forgotten. You are the first wave of women who created the culture change in Newbury Park and made us a very highly competitive team. And for that, I will be forever grateful and I am certain that your teammates will too. Here's no stranger to Lax Rats. I checked in with Mackenzie Olson from Pelos Verdes to see what her and her teammates are up to. Hey Tolly, it's Mackenzie from PV checking in, letting you know what my teammates and myself are doing to stay positive and fit right now. Right now we're doing as much as we can at home, getting some reps in, holding each other accountable through our group texts and group chats, sending pictures. You know, fingers crossed that the season right now has not been canceled, hoping that it stays that way. Hope everyone in Lax Rats and the lacrosse community are staying safe. Now that our show has changed quite a bit, not seeing those awesome games that all of you players play each and every week, and of course viewing those top 10 plays that we all look forward to, hey, the show can still go on from you coaches and players if you send us in your video to tell us how you are staying positive, staying motivated during the shutdown period time, and what kind of workouts you've been doing during this time period that we can share with everyone in the lacrosse community. You can always tweet us and Instagram us at laxrats. 
And here's something to look forward to for episode five airing on Tuesday of next week. Hey girls, I'm gonna go through top rankings to see top points, goals, ground balls, and assists to see where all of you girls are at on max preps. And of course, before I go, stay positive, stay healthy, stay focused, practice social distancing, and of course, wash your hands. I'll see you next week. Well, as most of you know, we've been following uh, four freshmen from last year. This year, they're sophomores, checking in with them periodically. I want to give a shout out to my man, Jake East. Jake, welcome to the show. Uh, what was yours and your team's reaction to the shutdown of the lacrosse season? Hey, Chopper, thanks for having me on. My team was super bummed about the cancellation of the season, just because we had so much potential this year. Even though we got thrown off by a ton of injuries, we still thought that we could have made a huge run in the playoffs and that we could have gone really far and maybe even seen a CIF championship. So during these times, what are you doing to stay sharp lacrosse wise? Since I've had a back injury that's like persisted till now, I haven't been able to do too much of like actual lacrosse playing or anything like that to keep my stick skills going. But I've always had a stick in my hand and been, uh, been able to walk around and do physical therapy to get better. So that's what I've been doing to get better. Jake, any plans for this summer? Yeah, actually I'm doing a ton of tournaments this year. First off to begin the summer, I'm doing some tournaments with LA Mavs, which is our local team run by Agora. And after that, I'm doing the lacrosse uh, national all-star game, which is like a new event. And uh, I'm going to uh, the showcase, which is uh, Showtime this year. And then I'm doing, to finish the summer, I'm doing some West Coast Stars tournament, which includes the NLF club championship and the Northern North American Lacrosse uh, Federation uh, tournament. Any idea how the virus might affect any of those activities? Uh, I don't think the virus will affect them too much because it's so far away, but we got a couple emails saying that we should be fine with flights and everything like that for then, but you never know how that could affect them in the long term. Jake, any tips you can give to younger players on how they can stay sharp and continue to build their skills? A tip I'd give for all the younger kids is just keep your stick in your hand every day because that just sharpens your stick skills throughout just having it. Even when you're just watching TV or anything, just put your stick in your hand and also, you gotta get reps with shooting and hitting the wall, so maybe go to your local school and do that. And if you need to stay in shape, you should always just think about running around, maybe some sprints on your own, anything like that. All right, so we followed up with Jake on how his rehab was going. It turns out his, uh, his PT clinic was closed, so we caught up with him doing some exercises on the floor. Hey, Chopper. Unfortunately, my physical therapy place got closed down due to the coronavirus, so I have to do this on my own. So listen, Lax Rats fans, obviously these are very unusual times and we are going to be without live uh, current content, at least for the next few weeks. And so we're wondering two things. Number one, do you want to continue to see the show because we like doing it and we're now safely uh, a distance apart from each other, uh, practicing social distancing. That's one question. The other question is, if we do continue forward, do you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see for content? Would you like to see previous games, championship games from previous years, old, older top 10 plays from previous seasons, or anything else, other interviews? Maybe you'd like to see us catch up to some former players that uh, were on the show previously that are now in college or graduated. Let us know your thoughts, because we'd be happy to factor those in on any plans we might have to continue the show. Right to the top 10 plays then, Chief. And coming in at number 10, we get a look at the slick backhand pass from Agurus Boaz Conrad, and then watch Andrew McCarthy shuffle the feet and convert. Shuffle with a shuffle. Okay, coming in at number nine, Chief Brentwood is on the rise these days, and we've got a couple of uh, plays from them this week. First of all, at the number nine play, it's Bryce Lord with the scoop and swoop, taking it all the way to the house for the bouncer. The Lord knows. Viewpoint cracks the top 10 this week. 
And it starts with this fling from goalie Matthew Bloomberg, a laser strike to Sam Kritzer. And he's going to set sail, lugging this one all the way despite a long pole, and then the tough angle bouncer for the goal. Changing levels, I like it. Back to Brentwood again at number seven, and this time it's Gage Dado with the sweet apple finding Luke Steinfeld. Chief, you are a goalie. How do you deal with all these B2Bs? Uh, you hope the pipe comes in, or you hope the percentages work out. At number six, it seems we get at least one pearl a week from Oak Park, and this time it's Tyler Bradbury finding Jason, and he is good enough in front for another nasty B2B. Back at number five, and we're checking in on the girls' side, and this time it's a girls' number three, demonstrating a complete skill set. First, the nifty stick check, the ground ball, then the burst, finally the duck and dunk. It's casual. True fierceness. From the tricks. At number four, it's Sierra Canyon's Mack Truck McLean. And Chief is just toying with Oak Park in this sequence. Several rips with an underhand give and get it back. And remember the Butch Cassidy movie, that Sundance Kid? Well, this guy's deadly accurate just as long as he can move. The look, the flip, one hand. This kid can go. And he's relentless. Look at him, just relentless, relentless, relentless. Goal. Love this kid's game. That's from deep. And the sweep. Deep and sweep, number five. Deep and sweep. Number three, we talked about him earlier. Crespi's Logan Solberg, and he's going to dazzle us. Dancing up a 360 spin and another one before sticking the landing. Tens all around, even from the Russian judge. Two more from Logan, who demonstrates ambidexterity. That's both hands, Chief. And the subtle feint to create space. Ambient a lot, man. This kid just spins and rolls and ducks and dives and shoots and rips. He's got a huge arsenal in this game. He's got a little bit of shimmy, a little shake it off. Chief at number two, it's Oak Park, and this time it's number 23, Tyler Bradbury, where he did the give uh, earlier. This time he's cranking in multiple goals. You know, people talk about an athlete's first step, but this guy's magic is in the last step, creating space or closing the gap to the cage. And if he's seeing, you're believing. Yeah, his ability to create separation on his second step is pretty impressive. It shows this sport is so great because it doesn't matter your size. If you can separate, you can score. For Max, that's a tough angle, right? There's a tougher angle. This kid's like a triangle, angled all up. I don't know much about angles, but that kid's good. Chief, how often do goalies make the top sequence as fodder for some middies goal scoring spree? And how often has a goalie actually made it as the number one play? Well, today's the day. Just sit back and admire a master craftsman practicing his trade. Eli Tarofsky sets up in goal and absolutely snuffs these shots. He's making stick saves, he's getting his foot on it, the pipe's helping him out a bit. The kid was seeing the ball, it looked like a beach ball to him on this day, and he really was the difference in this game. In a two-goal game, look at all these saves. And you look for the most part, no rebounds. Just gobbling the ball, no rebounds, that's right. If you can save it cleanly, it's transition the other way. This kid had a day for sure. Hey, we want to thank everybody for continuing to watch. We know everybody's got their plate pretty full with uh, everything that's going on with the virus, but we enjoy doing the show. Love having you to uh, you guys check in. A shout out to our executive producer, Mark Haddad, to our producer, director, Lisa Lisa, to my cohorts, Chris, and to Tolly. Want to tell everybody thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.